Hey guys, thanks for watching DIY Bry. In this episode, I'm going to be testing and reviewing ratcheting wrenches to hopefully give you guys some insight on some of the differences in the qualities and warranties and how they feel and test and just give you my overall opinion of what I think about some of these ratcheting wrenches and hopefully giving you guys some good information so that you can make an educated decision on what's going to be the best ratcheting wrench for you. All right guys, so the first ratcheting wrench set we're going to be reviewing is the Pittsburgh from Harbor Freight. Now I picked this up primarily just to do the review to kind of give you an idea of how these compare to, to some of the other brands so that you can make a decision if this is something you would want to even pick up from Harbor Freight. I went in um, on, uh, looks like uh, December 31st, 2016 here and uh, bought these ratcheting wrenches. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, what is that? 2884. All right guys, so 29 bucks is what I spent in there at Harbor Freight to get those uh, Pittsburgh uh, Harbor Freight ratcheting wrenches. The next set um, is a ratcheting wrench from Craftsman. This is a dual ratcheting wrench and this was actually a gift from my dad. He picked these up for me a few years ago and I've been using this set here for now, I think about three, maybe even four years I've been using uh, this Craftsman set here. And then Tekton sent me this ratcheting set here to review and give you my opinion of how these ratcheting wrenches stand up. All right guys, so the last set we're going to be reviewing is the Cornwell, which has a double flex head ratcheting head on it. Hey guys, make sure you stay tuned to the rest of this video. I'm going to be giving away a brand new set of these ratcheting wrenches for you guys in a sweet drawing. So make sure you stay tuned to find out which set it's going to be and how to enter into the drawing. All right guys, so the first thing I'm going to do to test these wrenches is just do a real basic repair. I've got this Chevy V8 engine here and what I'm going to do is pull the serpentine belt on and off with each one of the wrenches and just kind of see how it performs at compressing the spring-loaded tensioner back. Okay, so first we've got this Pittsburgh wrench here and um, it's got the, the ratcheting head there, 72 teeth ratcheting mechanism. And what I'm going to do is just stick this on the serpentine belt tensioner and it is a 15 millimeter. Just going to kind of feel the way that fits on there. Seems to be fairly correct, maybe a little bit uh, loose. I feel that's fairly acceptable for the tensioner that's on it. Now you've got a couple options of how you're going to pull this pulley off. Obviously you could stick it in the tooth side here and, and just push on it. The nice thing about this is you're going to be able to flex the head a little bit, you know, to flex it back away from the engine to push it off which gives you a little bit more leverage. It keeps you from smashing your knuckles compared to a flat wrench. You can't angle that back at all. So it's kind of nice to be able to angle the, the wrench back and then just kind of push the tensioner down. Now, the other option is, is you can put the open end side and put it on there and then push it back. The downside to that is obviously you don't have that ability to be able to kind of pull the wrench back. Um, but the nice thing about this is it does have that flex head, which actually gives you something to kind of push onto. And using the flex head like that to just kind of push down and pull the belt off. Now next I'm going to take this Craftsman wrench here. Now it has a dual ratcheting mechanism on it, that, which means it has a little ratcheting mechanism on this side of the head on the open end along with the regular ratcheting side on the box end. All right guys, so this dual ratcheting mechanism from Craftsman is definitely not one of my favorites. This, the box end, works really good. I don't really have any complaints out of the box end. This ratcheting mechanism that they've created here, it's designed to be able to kind of use it like a ratchet. Um, I have never found it to be useful. I've tried it. Um, there's been a couple instances that I've been able to rock it back and forth and I was like, okay, yeah, that was worth it. Um, but for the most part, it's just really, really clunky and I, I don't find the open end useful really at all. In fact, I would much rather use a regular open end wrench 
than this style with this ratcheting mechanism on there. I can just never really seem to fit it on there very good and I don't get a very good torque with this head. So I'm not a big fan of that ratcheting mechanism that they tried to include inside there. So your options are put the open end on there and push down and pull the belt off. And that seems to be, you know, relatively usable. You can use it. This is a fairly easy thing to do. Uh, whether you want to do the box end or the open end. It's able to get the belt off uh, just fine. The downside to this is obviously um, you're going to be right up against the engine. You're not going to be able to flex this out because it doesn't have a flex head on it. Uh, for me, I really, really like the ability to have the flex head on the wrench. Okay guys, so now I've got the Tecton uh, ratcheting wrench here and uh, it has you know the flex head. The unique thing about the Tecton is in one wrench you have two sizes. So you have 13 millimeter and 15 millimeter. Alright guys, so one difference between the Tecton and the rest of them is instead of being a 12 point is uh, just a standard uh, 6 point which typically if the bolt isn't already damaged or stripped or whatever, this is going to fit better and actually have less chance of uh, damaging the bolt. All right, so right away, one of the main advantages of the Tecton wrench here is definitely its length. That's really, really easy for me to be able to push this spring tensioner back with that extended length on this. I definitely have to say that this extended length here has got to be one of my favorite things about the Tecton wrench. It's really easy to press that spring uh, tensioner back. I mean, I'm just using my left hand there, which I'm a lot stronger with my right hand, and it's really easy for me to be able to push that back due to the extended length. And you've got this flex head on here, which gives you a little bit of you know, leverage to push that down on. And then you've still got the ability to flex the head out so that if you need to push the wrench further this way to move out of the way of pulleys and whatever, you can really get your hand out of the way to push that off. Okay, yeah, so now we're onto the Cornwell wrench and it has obviously the open end and it actually has some little teeth inside the open end there. They're gonna help grab onto the sides of the nut um, or the bolt there to keep from stripping it out and give it a little bit extra grip and fit tightly along the bolt. So first I'm just going to stick the open end on the tensioner and just see how it fits. And that feel, fits exactly how I think that it should. Um, it's loose enough that you can get it on there correctly, but tight enough that you're not going to damage the bolt or the tensioner in any way. And I do think that those added little teeth mechanisms um, that are on the, the wrench there do add to some of the ability to be able to grip onto that. So really like the way that the open end uh, fills and fits on there. Now these wrenches have been well used by one of my main mechanics at my shop. Um, he's had these for I think he said about two years now and you know they're used every single day in a professional application. So these things have really had a lot of miles put on them and uh, still fit perfectly. Um, the mechanism here that's rocking back and forth still feels uh, nice and tight and smooth. Okay guys, so I've got the, uh, the box end on there and then I've got the double head flex pushed all the way out and I'm able to push this fairly easy. Um, you know, obviously due to the length um, you can't uh, get the leverage on it like I, like I could with the Tecton uh, wrench, but still definitely enough leverage that I can go ahead and pull the belt off real easily. All right guys, so now we're gonna test out these wrenches in a little bit tighter of an application. So what we're going to do is get in a little bit of a tighter area and see how well these wrenches perform in tight spots. All right guys, so clear back here in the back of the engine compartment on this, uh, 5.3 liter Chevy V8 is one of the ignition coils that uh, fire the spark for the spark plugs. Now, so right back there is a little 10 millimeter bolt that I'm gonna try to undo. We'll put the Pittsburgh uh, wrench on this. 
and see how well I can get back there with this one. Okay, so using my left hand, I can get on it pretty good because of the angled head on it, enough that I'm loosening it up. Okay, so using that angle head allows me to get in there and uh, get that uh, bolt undone. Using the open end, um, I can get it on there, but I'm just going to round it off because I can't get a very good um, contact with the bolt because, you know, with that open end, it doesn't have this flex head on it. So the next one I'm going to try is the Craftsman. Now I'm a little bit worried because I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to get in there without a flex head on this. Yeah, in fact, I'm actually just chewing the top of the head of the bolt off. So I'm going to stop right there. And um, it's got this little dual ratcheting mechanism there. I'll go ahead and try that dual, uh, dual ratcheting mechanism on it. Okay, yeah, so in that spot, uh, pretty much useless. Um, I'd be fighting that 10 millimeter bolt a long time with this particular wrench trying to get it out of there. So I uh, wouldn't recommend this for uh, in tight spots. Okay, now I've got the Tecton uh, wrench here and obviously it's a lot longer so I'm a little bit concerned of maybe it's going to get in the way of this oil dipstick tube and or the transmission dipstick tube. Let's see if I can get in there. And then it doesn't have the 12 point, it only has the 6 point. So you don't have a lot of option of where to put the, the head. Okay, so I'm able to get on there. The teeth are a little bit spaced, quite a bit of ways away, so it's a little bit hard to tighten it and loosen it with, with this one. Uh, just due to the extended length, and it having uh, six points there, I find it a little bit harder to use this versus the Pittsburgh in a really tight spot. Okay guys, so now I'm going to try the Cornwell with a double flex head on it and see how well I'm able to loosen and tighten the bolt with this. Okay, yeah, so hands down the way the teeth are spaced apart and then having that double flex head I'm able to get around this wiring harness really, really easily. And hands down, this thing is a lot easier to tighten and loosen that bolt up there. Um, and half the time, I'm able to loosen this up. So the two easiest wrenches for me there to get on that uh, 10 millimeter bolt back there were the Pittsburgh and the Cornwell. And uh, the, Tecton, the Tecton wrench would be in third place as far as able to get back there and get that bolt undone. And the Craftsman, in fact I can see the top of the, the head on that thing, the Craftsman actually started to strip it out. So I wouldn't even recommend using this tool on that. That would uh, most likely damage the bolt and take a long time to do it. Alright guys. So you can see that bolt there, you can see right there at the top edge there, it was starting to strip out. Uh, that mainly was happening just trying to use that Craftsman wrench, only because I couldn't get a good angle on it. With the wiring harness there in the way, and just being tucked back there in between those two dipsticks, it's really hard to get a wrench back there. But uh, by far, uh, the Cornwell is able to get back there and get that bolt really easily. You're able to pull that in and out of there real fast. All right guys, so another fairly tight spot. I wanted to try these wrenches in, in just another area um, on the vehicle in another uh, tight spot. And right down there is a 13 millimeter bolt in the top of the valley. Now this is a fairly tight area to get into and I'm curious to see how the wrenches will perform getting in there into that spot as well. All right guys, so I'm gonna zoom in on the head of that bolt there so that you guys can see how well the wrenches fit on top of it. All right guys, so now we're gonna try the Pittsburgh wrench in this tighter spot. And it's able to get in there and do a good job at loosening it up. Gonna go ahead and flip that around, tighten it back up. 
and it's doing a good job at tightening them up. I can get a good uh, angle with this flex head right here at tightening that up. Okay, so now I'm going to try the Craftsman with the open end ratcheting end on it and see if I can get in there and loosen this up. So I'm not at a very good angle at this, but I'm still able to loosen this up. Using that uh, ratcheting mechanism on this end isn't working at all. So let me try the box end. to tighten this back up. Yeah, so it's just kind of twisting the bolt back and forth instead of doing the racket ratchet mechanism, it's twisting back and forth. And I think that's mainly because of the angle that I've got the, the head on. Because without the flex head on there, I can't really get a good, a, a, get a good angle on it to tighten it back up. In fact, it's kind of jammed on there. Okay, so now I'm going to use the Cornwell, and with its double flex head mechanism, I'm really able to get in there and tighten that back up really easily. Alright guys, so now I'm going to use the Tecton wrench in that same spot. Now you can see here, look at the length difference in the 13 millimeter uh, between the Cornwell and this tec Tecton wrench. Um, I mean, it's like dramatically longer. So in tight spots, this longer wrench might not fit very well, but let's see how it gets in on this particular spot. Okay, yeah. I'm able to loosen it up. The ratcheting mechanism is working. It's got a good angle on it, so I'm able to keep ratcheting it away and uh, it's working working perfect. All right guys, so what I found with in this particular spot, actually having the additional length is nice because I don't have to put my hand down underneath the intake manifold. I can actually keep the my hand up out, out of the way and it actually makes it easier for me to tighten this bolt up with this extra length. So in some applications, the longer length with the Tecton wrench actually works a little bit better. Here you can compare the four different wrenches uh, kind of side by side. Now these are three really common uh, size choices that I've picked here. You've got the 15 millimeter wrenches right here, you've got the 12 millimeter wrenches, and then uh, probably the most common size is going to be the 10 millimeter. So just kind of comparing them side by side to get an idea of the size difference this is the 15 miller Tecton wrench, and then you've got um, the next size down um, is going to be the, the Cornwell in length. And then it goes the Pitts, Pittsburgh and then the Craftsman. So the Craftsman is the smallest out of the, the four in the 15 millimeter. They're all fairly close in size other than the Tecton wrench. Now comparing them um, as far as the way the gears move. Um, the gears in the Craftsman feel really good. Now, again, I've used this set for about two years and it hasn't broken. Um, they move really easily. Um, but, you know, with not having the flex head on there, I'm really kind of limited to getting this into some of the tighter places. As far as how tight this mechanism is um, on the Pittsburgh wrench, um, it feels fairly smooth and you can stick it in one spot and it stays um, just like it should so that you can adjust the angle and it's not flopping around and all loose and and not fitting into the uh, place that you need it to be. Um, so the Pittsburgh feels pretty normal. Um, as far as the teeth that uh, are inside there, it's a 72 tooth mechanism and it feels relatively normal. Um, longevity wise it's hard to say how long that that mechanism will last um, over the years because you know I haven't used this set uh, really all that much other than today and then as far as the Cornwell obviously this double flex head uh, for me um, is a big big thing 
and it's the same scenario as far as it's really easy to move, but you can lock it into place um, depending on how you want it to be so it's not just flopping around and all loose there. So that works really well. And the open end uh, end of the wrench with these teeth on here is really, really effective. It fits very, very well. Um, as far as the gear mechanism in there, um, I think feels the best out of them all. Obviously this is the most highest price set of the wrenches and you can see that it's also probably the most highest quality um, out of them all as well. Now moving on to the Tekton uh, wrench here. Now this wrench is um, same scenario as far as the mechanism. You can kind of lock it in place. Um, it's not flopping around or loose or anything like that. So. Uh, this mechanism seems to work uh, really well. Seems to be fairly close in construction, you know, looking at it. Uh, the Pittsburgh <clears throat> and the Tecton seem to be fairly close um, on how that uh, pivot mechanism is there. And my favorite thing about the Tecton wrench is, is by far the length of it. Um, I found it still really easy to fit into tight places in most applications and it just gave you a lot more leverage to be able to get the bolts loose. So in my opinion, having the extra leverage is, is nice. And then also, um, you get both sizes, the 13 and the 15 um, in one wrench there. So it takes up actually less space in your toolbox and uh, you get uh, a large combination of, of wrenches. It's hard to say which one is my favorite. Uh, definitely I'm going to lean more towards uh, the Cornwell and the Tecton, um, primarily because of the key benefits of uh, this getting into such tight places. Um, this is this is really really hard to beat this Cornwell wrench, and it is obviously very high quality. So um, definitely one of my favorite uh, ratcheting wrenches is going to be this Cornwell wrench, and um, my other favorite is going to be the the Tecton because of the extended length. Um, I really think that the extended length uh, really makes this wrench better in a lot of applications than many of the wrenches out there and in some cases even uh, better than this Cornwell wrench because of the extended length. Like for the instance of getting my serpentine belt off, this hands down is way better of a wrench. And then as far as the actual usage, I would say um, the Pittsburgh over the Craftsman, and the reason why is obviously the flex head. Um, I think that the flex head is a very useful feature um, compared to a fixed head. Uh, you can get it in such uh, tighter places that I really think having the flex head uh, makes a big uh, benefit. And um, you know, although it's not my favorite open end uh, uh, wrench, um, I think this does uh, better than the open end on this because the open end on this side sucks. So in my opinion um, I would probably pick the Pittsburgh over the Craftsman um, although I think the Craftsman may be a little bit higher quality um, uh, wrench it's just not as usable because of this design and not having the flex head on there. The lamest thing about the Pittsburgh ratcheting wrenches is that it's only five wrenches. So you get the 10, the 12, the 13, 14, and 15. That's pretty limited. I mean, you are getting some of the most common wrench sizes, but you're missing out on 16, 17, 19, so, and then also eight millimeter. Um, and in wrenches, uh, you use an eight millimeter wrench a lot. Compared to the Craftsman, where you're going to get eight pieces. So all the way down to eight millimeter on up to 19. So you get a 17 and a 19. So you're going to get more wrenches out of the Craftsman. So therefore my opinion of these wrenches is the Craftsman and the Pittsburgh are a tie. And the reason why I give them a tie is the Craftsman, you get more wrenches. The Pittsburgh, you get less wrenches, but you get the flex head on it and a more useful open end. So um, depending on what's more useful to you, if you would rather have more sizes, you might want to get the Craftsman set. If um, your only set of wrenches 
is going to be one set and you don't have any other sets of wrenches, you may be better off with the Craftsman set here in this case because you're going to get eight different sizes versus only five. But if you're adding kind of a, uh, you're adding wrenches to your wrenches set, um, the Pittsburgh might be better for you because you're going to have the flex head option and you've got, you know, the five piece set. So if you already have a full set of standard open end wrenches, then you've got your other sizes covered. Um, so it might not be a bad idea. So depending on what you're going to look for, um, both the Craftsman and the Pittsburgh have a lifetime warranty on them. So uh, either way, if you break one, I think you can easily get the Craftsman or the Pittsburgh uh, warranty. Now, as far as the Tecton and the Cornwell, um, I would say it's tough to give this a first or a second place. They're both better in different reasons. Obviously, the Cornwell is better because of the uh, double flex head. Um, it is higher quality. You do get the open end with it. Um, so, very, very high quality wrench. Um, the biggest benefit to the Tecton, Tecton wrench is definitely the length. Um, the gear mechanisms all seem to work really relatively well. Um, so again, kind of depending on what you already have in your tool set, if you already have um, a fair amount of wrenches um, with the flex head and you've got good coverage, you may want to look at this to get the extra length. Um, I think that the extra length is going to come in handy in many, many cases. So it just kind of depends on what is better for you. Um, in my opinion, I would own both. Uh, I would own the Cornwell for the tighter spots and I would own this Tecton wrench uh, here for uh, the extra leverage. So in my opinion, it would be best uh, if you can afford it to buy both wrenches there. I think that they're both great buys. The downside to the Cornwell is by far going to be the price. It is the most expensive wrench set out of all these by far. So depending on your budget too, that can make a big difference on which wrench set that you purchase. Overall, if you're limited on funds and you want to get a really good uh, ratcheting wrench and not spend a ton of money, Tecton uh, ratcheting wrench is by far the best. Um, I think that uh, for the limited amount of money that you uh, spend, uh, I think you get a far better value out of this Tecton here than you do any of these other brands, whether it be the Cornwell, the Pittsburgh, or the Craftsman. 